So let's go through today and do a little bit of review with uh, the things that we were talking about prior to me being gone for the, the whole week, which daughter's still sick, so that's why I'm, I'm home again uh, today. So let's get this going. I right, so we started by talking about the fact that um, the role of a forensic scientist is to do the following things. They need to identify, analyze, compare, evaluate, make conclusions, and verify um, various data or, data or evidences found at the scene of a crime. Um, some of the basic services that you're going to find in a full-service crime lab, you're going to find a physical science unit, biology unit, firearms unit, document examination unit. Remember, that's going to also uh, start morphing into the world of computer science. And then photography unit, once again, that's going to start taking in the, the matter that a lot of your photography is now done through digital means, so it's both digital and the old uh, film photography. Some of the other services that may be offered and are often um, found in certain locations, but then they share it with other crime labs uh, throughout the, the state are the toxicology labs, latent fingerprinting lab, polygraph lab, and then uh, voice print analysis, as well as specialists that uh, work in the art of evidence collection. And then we talk about the fact that there's two different types of death. There's the stopping of the heart, and there's the stopping of the brain. And uh, regardless of which one occurs, um, decomposition starts immediately following um, the death of the individual. And then we talked about the fact that forensic pathology is nothing more than the study of sudden, unnatural, unexplained, or violent deaths. And we said that there's five different things that could show up on a death certificate. Um, death is being ruled natural, a homicide, a suicide, an accident, or it can be uh, undetermined. So we talked about the five different services. And so physical science is going to be more of the chemistry and physics based applications. Biology is going to be more living um, based applications. Firearms units going to be, look at ballistics and anything that has to do with firearms, and then your document examination and photography units as well. We talk about the medical examiner's office fits into this, as well as toxicology, latent fingerprinting, um, polygraphs, voice print analysis, and finally evidence collection. We then spent a little more time on the pathology piece. We looked at death and what that was, and we talked about the fact that it's the pathologist's job to perform autopsies. And then we took the time and reviewed the autopsy in class. Remember, an autopsy is a medical procedure that's going to consist of a thorough ex examination that's going to try to determine the cause and manner of death uh, for an individual. Right? Also, you're looking to see if there may be any underlying diseases present in the individual. So, And we also talked about the fact that there's certain times when autopsies are required. In the case of a violent death, a suspicious death, a sudden and unexpected death, death of any child under the age of six, deaths that occur uh, in a state institution, deaths that um, don't have a physician present, and then we talk about also um, deaths that are a result of a public health hazard. And so then we also spent time talking about the five manners of death, natural, accidental, homicide, undetermined, and then suicide. Yeah, so here's a slide I actually want to start on. So going back to day one, forensic science or criminalistics is the application of science to those criminal and civil laws that are enforced by police agencies and the criminal justice system. And Locker's exchange principle is going to state that contact between people and objects during a crime can involve a transfer of material that is evidence of the crime. All right, so then we started getting into the different things that happen following death. And we started talking about rigor mortis. And we talked about the fact that usually it's um, at full effect within the first 24 hours and is gone within 36 hours. And this is a result of the relaxing and tightening of muscles. We also talk about liver mortis, which is a condition that is a result of bruising or discoloration because of the effects of gravity on the blood that's stuck inside the blood vessels. 
So typically you're going to find this bruising or discoloration on the downside of the vehicle, so the side that's going to be closest to the ground. Um, I did a little bit of research here um, over the last two days since I've not been been in school and then been at home instead. When my daughter's been going through and taking her naps, I did some research and there was some, and the, some of the research I looked at are uh, rigor mortis. In liver mortis, uh, they were talking about that. So um, the, the research that I have to do is I, I haven't caught up on my CSI episodes on on my DVR, so I got a lot of a lot of good research done here, especially today. And there's a couple of good episodes that had uh, rigor mortis and liver mortis, as well as getting into some of the anthropology and entomology. So don't be surprised if I, I pull out a CSI episode from this season because it has pretty good relevance to what we're talking about. And then they do a good job of showing how DNA is not done. So I might get it out for the same episode for that purpose. So um, the benefits to being home, you can get some research done. All right, so the medical examiner is going to try to figure out, remember we said all the W's except for the Y. All right, who's the victim? What injuries were present? When did the injuries occur? Where and how uh, were the injuries produced? And which, which injuries are the ones that are related to um, the death of the individual? All right, so we then went into rigor mortis, and we said it usually starts within one to three hours, but it's usually fully developed in 10 to 12 hours. And we're talking about at a normal indoor uh, room temperature. The body is going to typically remain stiff for um, 24 to 36 hours, um, but it may, the, you know, warmer temperatures are going to make the rigor mortis go through at a faster timeline. Colder temperatures are going to slow it down. And you guys spent time looking at that um, with the thing that you worked on on Friday. And then we said the amount of muscle mass has an, an impact on that as well. The more muscles that you have, the more rigor we're going to have as well. And we finally we talked about uh, the death grip. That's a result of the muscles being used at the time of death, and uh, rigor mortis happens um, immediately at the time of death. And we look at some of the different examples, and once again, you can see uh, signs of uh, cadaveric spasm here holding the gut. Then you went through, you did work on those um, activities. Those should be in the grade books at this time. So now let's get into some new things. So if you don't have your notebooks out, you should have them out. Um, and if uh, Mr. Stark needs to pause this a second so people can get those out, um, please feel free to do so. So let's get into to liver mortis. Liver mortis is a result of the blood pooling. And then um, what's going to happen is the blood's going to accumulate in the small vessels that are due to gravity. There's nothing, if the vessels aren't broken, there's nowhere for that blood to pool out of the body, so it's going to pool in the lower portions of the body, once again, as a result of, of gravity. It's going to start in about 20 to 30 minutes following death. It's going to be fixed in place for uh, at about 10 to 12 hours following death. So it's a pretty quick phenomenon. It's not going to occur, though, in areas where there's tight clothing or um, there's objects pressing on the body tissue. You know, similar to a tourniquet, those are designed to make it so the blood flows away from um, where the pressure is, and so the blood's not going to accumulate in the areas where um, there's um, compact, uh, compact is not the right word, where the, the skin and the blood vessels inside of it are being compacted together, like you have with tight clothing or if something's pushing against it. So if the person fell and was leaning up against a chair, you're not going to see the uh, the rigor, excuse me, the liver mortis accumulating in the part that's touching the chair. It's going to um, spread out around it. So you can see an example of it here. Um, this victim you can see was actually lying on her back, and then they they flipped her back over. All right, you can see that um, the pooling here on the legs. Similar thing going on. This person appears to have actually been flipped over on the other side, um, and then they flip them over for examination because you can see the discoloration in these areas, which indicates that it, that was laying down on the um, back of her legs. So you can see signs here of the victim was, in this case, laying against something that had some sort of a paneling to it because of the fact that you can see areas where it was in contact with something and that's why you're not seeing the discoloration there and then areas where there wasn't any contact and so you can see all kinds of discoloration. <coughs> Once again, 
this victim was found laying on her back, and this is the shot showing her flip back around. And what in this one you can see um, discoloration happening down on the individual's back. Same thing you can see here, and obviously they were pressed up against something because you can see the discoloration does not show in this location. And one final one. You can see a tremendous amount of discoloration here where the blood's pulled up in that location where they're pressed up against something. Alright, the other type of mortise, the third type of mortise is elder mortise. Elgar mortise is going to deal with body temperature. All right. What's going to happen is uh, following death, you no longer have the mechanism in place to maintain your internal body temperature. All right. So you no longer have the ability to maintain that homeostasis. So now what's going to happen is the body is going to slowly start to cool off until it reaches room temperature, similar to what happens uh, with your, your cup of hot chocolate, your cup of coffee, whatever it is you have lying out there. Eventually, over time, if you let it sit, it's going to get back down to room temperature. Your body's going to do the same thing following death because the hypothalamus is no longer functioning and therefore it's no longer doing uh, the things it needs to do in order to be able to maintain that body temperature. Well, the thing is, the cooling of the body temperature happens at a relatively controlled rate. You know, typically, and you're going to find different numbers in different locations. In fact, uh, I, I should have changed this on the PowerPoint. I should make this be, um, it'll cool one and a half degrees Celsius for the first 12 hours, because that's the way I have it on your worksheet. Yeah, see, and this is even different from the worksheet. It's going to be, like I said, I found different sources for this, so I just want you to recognize for the first six hours, it's going to cool more rapidly for the first six to 12 hours than it will following 12 hours. All right, so you can see one and a half degrees per period, of, per hour, versus once you get up to about the 12 hour point after death, it's going to cool at a rate of about one degree Celsius per hour. All right, and there's going to be many factors that are going to have an impact on this. Um, the body fat on the individual, because that has uh, insulation to it. The clothing on the individual, um, environmental temperature is going to have an impact. If it's cold out, this is going to happen uh, more quickly. If it's warm out, it's not going to happen quite as quickly, uh, and so on and so forth. And so typically what you can do is you can go through and graph the temperature and see the difference. So you can see here this is at immediately following death. And you can see the general temperature is... We're at close to 99 degrees Fahrenheit, a little bit to the left, so 98.6. And you can see over time, this value goes up. So as the body temperature cool is cooling, you can see the number of hours that have gone by. This is actually a pretty poor graph. These should be switched around. This, should, this is your independent variable. This is the dependent variable. This should be switched around, but hey, we can get beyond that. So what I'm going to have you do next is I'm going to have you try to figure out the um, time of death using algorithms, and I'm going to give you the remainder or a portion of the block to work on this. I'm going to go through and do one of the problems with you, and then um, we'll have time to work on it. And then after you get done working on it, you guys can finish up the CSI episode that you started yesterday. So uh, give me a second. I'm going to keep the the video going, but I'm going to. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep the video going, but I'm going to switch to a different thing here. So I'm going to stop the, the PowerPoint at this point. I'm going to switch to this. All right, I'm going to get my stuff centered here. Cords out of the way. Let me get my mouse out of the way. All right, so you can see the paper you're working on. And so hopefully you already have this. And I apologize, the zoom on this is, is not as good as I had hoped, but um, we'll see if we can work our way around it. So, a couple of things you need to know while you're doing this, this paper. The three big things are up here. You need to recognize that the normal body temperature for a human being is 37 degrees Celsius. 
All right, the temperature loss, at least in this case, that we're going to use for the first 12 hours is going to be 0.78 degrees Celsius per hour. And then file after 12 hours, that rate is going to be cut in half to 0.39 degrees Celsius per hour. All right, so if you look at the example that's been given to you already, it's asking what's the temperature loss for someone who's been dead for 12 hours. All right, so if they've been dead for 12 hours, we don't need to use the second equation. We only need to use the first equation. So what we're going to do is take our rate, which is 0.78 degrees Celsius per hour. You're going to multiply it then by the number of hours that the individual has been dead. And that will tell you that the temperature loss for that individual should be 9.36 degrees Celsius. So um, we could also then turn around and ask the question, okay, so what's the temperature after 12 hours? So then you just take the 37 degrees Celsius, subtract from it the 9.36 degrees Celsius, which is the amount of temperature that's been lost to give you the, the temperature of the individual after 12 hours. <coughs> However, the problems are not always this easy. All right, sometimes you got to use both equations. So in this case, in this next one, um, we're going to have the person's been dead for less than 12 hours. Okay. So then now you're going to use the rate of just the 0.7. Okay, I'm going to backtrack here. You use the rate of 0.78 degrees Celsius per hour. The temperature of the body was 32.2 degrees Celsius. And if normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, I need to subtract these two to see how much temperature has been lost since death. And so you can see 4.8 degrees Celsius has been lost since the person passed away. If we want to know how long that person has actually been sitting there uh, dead, we're then going to take our rate and multiply it by the number of um, unknown hours to figure out the degrees that have been lost. So when we look at the information that we have available, we have the rate. We don't know how many hours this, this individual has been dead, but we do know they've lost this much body temperature. All right, so now it becomes an eligible problem. If I can just set it up now as 0.78 degrees Celsius per hour times x equals 4.8 degrees Celsius. And now it just becomes a matter of solving it for, for x. And so now I've got 4.8 divided by 0.78 to give me 6.1 hours. 6.1 hours, let's make it a little bit more specific. Let's take the 0.1 hours and let's convert it to minutes. All right, so we know it's been 6 hours. If there's 0.1 hours, it's the same thing as 6 minutes. Because if there's 60 minutes in an hour, multiply that by 0.1, that'll give you 6 minutes. So when we say 6.1 hours, what we really mean is the person's been dead for 6 hours in 6 minutes. So there's a lot of stuff there. So let's do number 1 together, and then I'll let you guys um, break out and see if you can work on numbers on 2 and 3. I do have an answer key there, uh, so you guys can, can check your work with Mr. Stark. So the body's been found in the winter, and it has a temperature of 33.1 degrees Celsius. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how much temperature has been lost. So if we normally have 37 degrees Celsius, and it's now 33.1 degrees Celsius, when we do our math, so I'll even throw this in here. So when we do our math, it took you 37 minus 33.1. Now you shouldn't need a calculator to do this, but in case you do, it's lost 3.9 degrees Celsius. Up above here, it says if it's lost less than 9.36 degrees Celsius, then we only need to use this one. So it's lost less than 9.36 degrees Celsius. 
is this one. Alright, so now we can just use that equation. So, we now know we're going to use the rate of 0.78 degrees Celsius per hour. We're multiplying that by the part that we don't know to equal to 3.9 degrees Celsius. So now it's an eligible problem. Multiply both sides by the 0.78. You should be divide both sides by the 0.78 to get rid of it. Do the math. So 3.9 divided by something like that. 3.9 divided by 0.78, which gives me x is equal now to 5 hours. Alright, so you're going to go through and do the same thing with numbers 2 and numbers 3. So number 2 you're going to do that, and number 3 you're going to do that. Once again, if you get into one where the amount of temperature is more than 9.36 degrees Celsius, so the ch temperature change is greater than that. So if it's greater than 9.36 degrees Celsius, you have to use both of these equations. You're going to use the less than 9.36 for the first 9.36 degrees Celsius. You can use this for beyond 9.36 degrees Celsius. In fact, let's let me put this over a second. Let's do number two together as well, just so I can demonstrate that one for you. So how long has the victim been dead if the body temperature is 25.9 degrees Celsius? First thing we need to do is figure out how much the temperature has changed. 37 minus 25.9. So the temperature has changed 11.1 .1 degrees Celsius. Since this number is bigger than 9.36, I have to use two equations. So first I'm going to do the 9.36. So I'm going to go 0 0.78 degrees Celsius per hour times x is going to give me 9.36. I'm going to do my math. Multiply 9.36. Excuse me, divide it by 7, 8. That's going to give me 12 hours. Hey, that we should have predicted that because it says 0 to 12 hours. But, I still have eleven point one minus nine point three six. I still have one point seven four hours I haven't accounted for. Or excuse me, degrees that I haven't accounted for. So now I gotta set it up again, but this time I'm gonna use the 0.39 degrees Celsius rate. So 0.39 degrees Celsius per hour here multiplied by a thing we don't know equals 1.74. Okay, so now I'm going to go 1.74 divided by the 0.39 because once again I'm down to an eligible problem. I'm getting x equals 4.46. So in this case, I want to add these two numbers together. So 12 plus 4.46 is going to give me 16.46 hours. Now we could go through and convert that to minutes. I guess at this point, I'm going to be okay with you leaving that as hours. If you get these ones where there's, let's set the ground rules right now. If you get ones where it's just one step, I want you to go convert it to hours and minutes. If you get ones that are two steps like this, you can leave it in hours. 
All right, so why don't you see if you can work your way through uh, the rest of these. Uh, Mr. Stark does have a key for number three. See if you can figure out four, five, and six. And then also go through and see if you can make some predictions about if certain things were true. Because we talked about the amount of liver mortises, or excuse me, algor mortis, the rate at which it changes is going to be based upon um, certain things. We talked about clothing, we talked about um, environmental temperatures, things of that sort. So why don't you go through and give that a shot. All right, uh, I'm hoping that I will be back on Thursday so that if you have any questions, we can go through these. And then Thursday, be ready to start the, the forensic autopsy. So since we're going to be starting that, you're going to want to make sure you're not wearing the, the nicest of clothes because you know, there are times where it gets a little bit messy doing that lab. You do have your aprons, but you know, just to be careful, you, know, you might want to you may want to dress down a little bit tomorrow. Or excuse me, on Thursday. All right, you guys, have a good day, um, and I will see you on Thursday.